Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very interesting expression, zero to the power zero. So we're gonna talk about uh, what this might be and I'll be showing you some comments first because I had made a post about, I think five months ago, uh, about something like this, which was a joke actually. But anyways, uh, we'll take a look at some of the comments. This stirred a lot of good discussion and this is a very debatable topic. All right, let's take a look. So some people say that zero to the power zero is equal to one, but others claim that it's not well-defined or it's called indeterminate, or you can call that undefined. So there are different ideas about um, zero to the power zero. And a lot of times people are gonna use the fact that this comes from limits. So, a lot of times the you know the fact that this is undefined they base it upon limits and i was under the same impression like okay zero to the power zero is a member of the indeterminate community but there's no such thing apparently anyways and i know some people are sad that why don't i allow it so from now on i'm gonna allow zero to the power zero so what is it is it one is it zero is it undefined and so on and so forth obviously there's a lot of good discussion about this under this post and other places. And I want to say thank you to Angel Mendez because this video has been inspired by his comments. Okay. Anyways, as you can see here, uh, he claims that zero to the power zero is not undefined. And let's see what that is going to look like. So I'm going to be presenting three different approaches. And let's start with the first one. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the binomial theorem. As you know, the binomial theorem is used to expand something like a plus b to the nth power, and that can be written as n choose zero, a to the power n times b to the power zero, plus n choose one times a to the power n minus one times b to the power one, and so on and so forth. You know, there is gonna be n plus one terms, this is not infinite sum, so on and so forth. Now, in this expression, in this identity, if you go ahead and pick n equals 1 and b equals 0. Then we get the following, a plus 0 to the power 1. And by using this formula, we're going to get something like this. Obviously, we're going to have two terms because n is equal to 1. It's always n plus 1 terms. So we're going to get 1 choose 0 times a to the power 1 times 0 to the power 0 plus 1 choose 1 times a to the power 0 times 0 to the power 1. I don't think there's any argument about zero to the power zero being, or I'm sorry, zero to the power one being zero and a to the power zero being one in general, right? So this part is actually going to be zero. Now, we end up with something like this. And if you simplify this, a plus zero is a, a to the first power is also a, and a is supposed to equal a times zero to the power zero. And this can only be true if zero to the power zero is equal to one, okay? And obviously you can assume that a does not equal zero in this case, a is any arbitrary number. So this kind of shows that zero to the power zero is equal to one, okay? Which is kind of interesting. So we're gonna look at it from three different perspectives and see what we get every time. And then we're gonna talk about it. And I'm also gonna show you something else. Anyways, another thing that we can basically look at is one over one minus x, which actually can be written as n equals zero to infinity, the sum x to the power n. So if you think about this, this is going to be an infinite sum, right? And obviously we want x to be, you know, between negative one and one in order for this to, to be convergent, so on and so forth. But if you if expand this, you're gonna get x to the power zero, plus x to the power one, plus x to the power two, so on and so forth. And there's gonna be infinitely many terms, obviously. This is only gonna hold, this only holds for x equals zero if the following happens, if and only if I should say, maybe. So if x is equal to zero, take a look at both sides. On the left here, we're gonna get one. And on the right hand side, if you replace all these x's with zeros, you're going to get zero to the power zero plus zero to the power one plus zero to the power two. And all the powers are basically gonna increase. And as you know, these are all zeros, right? So these are meaningless. We end up with again, zero to the power zero equals one. 
All right. So we got the same result with the second approach. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third one. And then we're going to look at something else. So the third approach is going to use e to the power x. We're going to be writing a power series. And as you know, power series for e to the x can be written as the sum sigma n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n divided by n factorial, which can be written as x to the power 0 over 0 factorial plus x to the power 1 over 1 factorial plus x to the 2 divided by 2 factorial, so on and so forth. And in this case, if we replace x with 0 on both sides, left-hand side is going to give us e to the power 0, and all the way on the right-hand side, we're going to be getting something like 0 to the power 0 divided by 0 factorial plus 0 to the 1 divided by 1 factorial plus 0 squared divided by 2 factorial, and you know the rest. Now, hopefully we all know that 0 factorial is equal to 1, so this is going to give us 1 equals 0 to the power 0, because 0 to the first power, second power, all these powers that are going up are all going to be zeros, so we don't have to worry about them. And again, we got 0 to the power 0 equals 1. So hopefully this is convincing enough and hopefully I'm not misinforming people with this video. Okay, please let me know in the comment section down below. So basically these are three different ways we can approach it. If 0 to the power 0 is not 1, then all of these things are not going to work for those particular values we talked about. And we know that they're well defined. So let's take a look at one last thing and then we'll actually finish with that. Again, some people claim that 0 to the power 0 is undefined. Some people say it's indeterminate. Some people say that, well, it can be defined to be 1, but sometimes it's better to define it as 0. But here's one of the things that I got from Angel Mendez, and thank you very much, because this is a numerical expression. So we do need to well define it, and it's well actually well defined because we have two numbers and a symbol. So here's a really good explanation. When you have a string of symbols, the definition is determined by the definition of each individual symbol. And of course, there shouldn't, they shouldn't contradict each other, so on and so forth. And we do basically know two symbols, 0 to the power 0. We have the 0 symbol, and then we have the to the power symbol. And we know the definition for both of these. And this answer, that's what's important, I think, uh, again, thanks to Angel Mendez about all these ex explanations, that 0 to the power 0 is uniquely determined and it can be proven that 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. I'm pretty sure there's a better way to prove it. Please let us know if you do uh, have different ideas. And finally, this is the best part of this actually, because if you graph y equals x to the x, you're going to notice that, hey, 0 to the power 0 is actually 1 because we don't have an open dot. Obviously, as Desmos doesn't do an open dot, but guess what? When you enter it into Desmos, Desmos even tells you, hey, 0 to the power 0 is equal to 1. So hopefully, case closed, please let me know what you think. I think this is a pretty interesting thing. I'm, I'm glad we settled it, and if you have different ideas, please let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.